It's January 8, 2005, and the air is thick with suspense as cave diver David Shaw takes the plunge into the mysterious depths of Bushman's Hole. The seasoned diver had already explored these murky blue waters when he attempted to beat the record for the deepest cave dive. But he had a different mission when he took the plunge this time around. That's because Dave was trying to bring closure to a family that had lost a loved one 10 years ago. And while he was able to accomplish the goal, he ended up paying the ultimate price for it. Join us on this journey to understand the tragic fate of a brave diver, the mysteries lurking in the deep, and the echoes that linger within Bushman's Hole. Also known as Busman Set, this cave is tucked away on the Mount Carmel game farm in South Africa's Northern Cape Province. When you look at it from above, it might seem like a pool in a rocky crater. Sounds normal, right? But here's the thing. Deep underneath that surface hides a submerged cave that goes a whopping 920 feet into the earth. This makes it one of the deepest accessible underwater caves anywhere on the planet. So what appears as just a pool is actually a gateway to one of the deepest and most fascinating underwater worlds out there. Bushman's Hole, with its jaw-dropping altitude of over 4,900 feet above sea level, is no walk in the park. It's the kind of dive that tests even the bravest souls, and with decompression challenges equivalent to diving a mind-blowing 1,100 feet below sea level, yeah, it's intense. In the quest to conquer Bushman's Hole, divers like Verna Van Schaik pushed the limits, hitting a staggering depth of 725 feet on November 24, 2004. In 1993, Aben Leiden went down to 197 feet, only to lose consciousness and never resurface. You see, this underwater abyss doesn't just offer records, it demands sacrifices. Fast forward to 1994, and another man steps up to the challenge. Dayon Dreyer was a 20-year-old thrill-seeker with a love of diving, hunting, and tearing up the roads in a souped-up car. The invitation to join the South African Cave Diving Association at Bushman's Hole was Dayon's golden ticket to adventure, only it didn't turn out quite as he planned. With over 200 dives under his belt, he was no stranger to the underwater realm. So he and his team set out on December 17, 1994, at the Bushman's Hole. But the routine training took a turn for the worst very quickly. The divers were basking in the thrill of the deep when Dayan's light flickered after reaching a depth of 164 feet during ascent. In a heartbeat, tragedy struck as he lost consciousness during his ascent, a mere 30 seconds after signaling a thumb up to a fellow diver. The team desperately tried to grab at him and pull him from the clutches of the deep. But fate had other plans. The young diver vanished beyond their grasp, leaving his diving buddies traumatized. Dayon had lost consciousness, and that meant he was as good as dead down there. You see, at those extreme depths, the very air becomes a silent assassin, poisoning the central nervous system in a dance with oxygen toxicity. Think breathing struggles, dizziness, and seizures, symptoms that hint at Dayon's tragic fate. The weight of reality hit his family like a tidal wave. There was no hope of rescuing him alive. Despite brave attempts from other divers, the search proved futile. Bushman's Hole became Dayon's eternal resting place, marked by a memorial plaque in honor of the young diver. But while locals may whisper about another diver falling prey to a mysterious serpent, the truth is that the underwater realm at Bushman's Hole just doesn't play nice. Here, divers grapple with mind-bending pressure, a force so intense it could crush their very lungs. To combat this danger, divers inhale air at pressures that defy the norm. And that's where nitrogen enters, the threat lurking in the deep. This gas refuses to be tamed by our bodies. It lingers, creating a ticking time bomb. As divers ascend, the pressure releases its grip, unleashing nitrogen bubbles into the bloodstream, Rise too swiftly, and you're in for a roller coaster of pain, assaulting the brain, spine, heart, and those precious organs that keep life pulsating. They have to make a series of pit stops on their way up, 
And here's the kicker. The deeper they go, the longer these pit stops become. But the challenges don't stop there. Nitrogen narcosis is a condition where excess nitrogen messes with divers' minds. As they descend into the abyss, pressure builds up, and so does the amount of nitrogen in their bodies. The result? A mental fog rolls in, clouding their ability to think straight. Far too often, divers have become prey to the unforgiving depths of Bushman's Hole. But David Shaw was a risk-taker his entire life, and for him, this cave dive was just another step to glory. So when he dove on October 28, 2004, he planned on shattering records, but once again, fate intervened. Deep within Bushman's Hole, Shaw stumbled upon Dion's body, partially trapped in silt and mud. Quickly realizing the situation he was in, David desperately tried everything to free Dion, even attaching a line to make finding him easier later on. But the cave never plays fair. As David ascended back to the surface, he knew that there was no way he was leaving that body down there. So in the following months, a huge operation took shape, led by David and his pals. It was a well-coordinated effort where they made careful plans, ready to handle any unexpected issues, with Dave practicing the whole operation through multiple practice dives at Bushman's Hole. When D-Day finally arrived, Dion's family were on the scene, but they chose to arrive late, making sure they wouldn't add extra pressure on David as he went underwater. Thankfully, the initial descent went smoothly as David reached the depths of the cavern, found Dion's body, and carefully started the task of setting him free from the silt-covered cave floor. They'd spent months planning out each scenario, but after successfully releasing Dreyer's body, something surprising happened. It floated. You see, given the time Dion's body had spent underwater, everyone expected that they'd be pulling a skeleton from the deep. But much to their surprise, his diving gear had somehow preserved some tissues making his body more buoyant than anyone had imagined. What happened next was a several-minute-long struggle as David tried and failed to place Dayan's body into the silk bag. Gasping for air with every effort, he realized that he was in a race against the clock. And when the body bag got entangled with the line securing his equipment, Dave almost lost hope. With each passing minute, each breath more draining than the one before, and the divers helping David in his rescue attempt soon sensed that things were not right. Alarm bells rang as they observed no bubbles around Dave's dive location, and the team's anxiety skyrocketed when they realized his flashlight remained eerily still. The tension was thick enough to cut with a knife. After a nerve-wracking wait, Don Shirley made the call to plunge into the depths where Dave had disappeared, determined to figure out what was going on. But around 800 feet down, a deafening noise shattered the underwater silence. Don's regulator controller had exploded. He had to turn from finding his friend to saving his own life. Don had to control his air supply manually as he tried returning to the support divers that were above him. So they managed to get back to the surface. Powerless to reach David, all Don could do was convey the heart-wrenching news of his friend's demise to the other divers. Using an underwater slate, he jotted down the gut-punching truth. Dave won't be making it back. After the heartbreaking events at Bushman's Hole, the divers decided to call it a day. The glitch in his gear took its toll on Don Shirley during the retreat, leaving him with decompression-related injuries. Wrestling with balance and coordination challenges for months, Don somehow mustered the courage to dive back in just a few days later. Afterward, as the team cleared out the equipment and lines from Bushman's Hole, they were surprised to see that both Dion's and David's bodies had floated up, tangled with a line. Ten days after Bushman's Hole gave the bodies back, Dion's parents, Theo and Marie Dreyer, went to see their son. When the morgue attendant gestured for them to come in, Marie didn't really know what to brace herself for. But when she saw a fully fleshed out body, her tears stopped and she felt at peace. David Shaw's ashes were laid to rest in South Africa, a place he had grown to love. Many years after his untimely passing, the younger diver also found a rightful resting place. In the end, 
David fulfilled his mission to provide closure to Dion's family. But tragically, it was a mission that came at the highest cost, his own life. The devastating loss of Dave Shaw rocked the diving world to its core. Dave and Dion's tragic fates are stark reminders of the real risks lurking in the depths of deep water diving. That's a wrap on the Bushman's Hole cave dive tragedy, a tale filled with heartbreak. So what do you think? Was there any way to escape the fate of adding one more name to the ominous cave's history? Drop your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more exciting cave diving stories. Until next time.